Hello everyone and welcome to the Plugin India channel. This time we've got a rather interesting topic for you. Uh, it's about different types of battery chemistries. So every major automaker has announced plans to build lithium and battery giga factories. Tesla, Volkswagen, BYD, Ford and others have plans to build giant giga factories. In India, Ola Electric and the Tata Group have plans to make massive plants and manufacture these cells at a large scale. The aim to build these huge factories and at a very large scale is to reduce price. But lithium has a fundamental problem. Demand for the element is so great that applications including electric vehicles, portable electronic devices and stationary energy storage units that lithium mining companies are struggling to keep up. In addition to about 90% of the world's supply of lithium, is controlled by Chinese companies. The world needs to do something about this. And yes, changes are happening to solve the problem. Let's dive straight in. The prices of lithium have gone to insane level. This is not me. This is the CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, who tweeted in April, Tesla might actually have to get into the mining and refining directly to affect it at scale. Unless costs improve, there is no shortage of the element itself as lithium is almost everywhere on earth but the pace of extraction and refinement is very slow. Musk pointed to data from the information service World of Statistics showing that the price of lithium hydroxide had risen to $78,032 per metric ton from merely $6,800 per ton in 2019. As Musk says, there is a lot of lithium. Last year, the world mined 100,000 metric tons of lithium for use in consumer electronics and electric vehicles. The world's usable reserves are around 14 million metric tons, while the proven reserves amount to around 62 million tons. So there is a lot of lithium out there. Even if we continue to use lithium ion batteries for the next 20 years, we are good. The mining industry cannot keep up with the demand. So the alternative is to manufacture batteries based on sodium chemistry. Multiple automakers are seeking a secure supply chain for battery materials. The big issue with sodium ion batteries is that they can store only about two thirds of the energy of lithium ion batteries of equivalent size. But the energy density is steadily increasing and they are reaching the levels which are found in lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are the safest kind of lithium ion batteries. None of the sodium ion batteries are commercial yet but serious competition for lithium could soon be on the way. So if you look at the periodic table of elements, lithium and sodium are similar metals. They are both alkaline metals and they both have one electron in the outermost shell. Sodium is bigger and heavier than lithium. They both are in the same group. Lithium right now is very expensive and sodium is quite cheap. As we discussed earlier, the price of lithium hydroxide has risen to $78,032 per metric ton while the price of sodium hydroxide is below $800 per metric ton. Also, sodium is universally available. So there are lots of advantages for sodium ion batteries. We have been hearing about the game changing battery chemistry like solid state batteries or graphene batteries or dual carbon with carbon anode and carbon cathode batteries. But those will take a little bit more time, maybe more than a decade to materialize in my opinion. So the most promising chemistry is sodium ion, which will go into production as early as 2023. As you can see in this table, the process to extract the raw material is around 100 times cheaper. However, the battery pack contains lots of other stuff that apart from the elemental lithium or sodium analyst feel that sodium ion cells will be 20 to 40 percent cheaper. But challenge, the challenge will be to bring the technology to scale. And we can expect large sodium ion giga factories only in the mid 2020s. The good part is that the manufacturing process is very similar to lithium ion cell manufacturing. So all of these facilities can be used for either. Apart from the cost, there is no risk of thermal runaway with sodium ion technology. In fact, with sodium ion technology, you can discharge completely to 0% and then transport them. There is zero risk of them catching fire it is very safe to transport. Another good benefit is low temperature performance. This is not much of a factor for India, but it's good news for people using EVs say in the Himalayas. You don't have to warm up the battery. It works great 
from minus 20 degree Celsius to plus 65 degree Celsius, which very well takes care of the entire temperature range of the subcontinent. The biggest problem with sodium ion is the gravimetric energy density is quite low. It's 70 to 160 watt hours per kilogram. CATL, the Chinese battery behemoth, have claimed to have reached that level. The energy density is approaching that of LFP batteries. So, for ultra efficient vehicles like scooters or motorcycles, LFP batteries and sodium ion can work totally fine. So, who are the major players in the sodium ion game? The three major companies working on sodium ion cells are Faradion, a UK based startup, Natron Energy, Bay Area, San Francisco based startup, and CATL, a huge Chinese battery behemoth. CATL is one of the largest battery manufacturers in the world and they announced last year about manufacturing sodium ion batteries in 2023. So, Faradion is a small UK startup who has been working on this technology for many years and are bought out by our very own Reliance Industries who will build several giga factories within India by 2024 and Reliance is totally bullish on the sodium ion cell technology. Finally, Natron is a company based in Stanford University. They have a chemistry that uses Prussian blue. For both anode and cathode, they are able to achieve an energy density of 70 watt hours per, kilometer, uh, per kilogram, which is low, but their main focus is energy storage. The life cycle is crazy. As you can see here, they claim more than a lakh cycles on their cells. While LFP cells have only around 2000 cycles, if they can improve the gravimetric energy density, they can be a serious player. Just imagine a scooter battery that can be used for a million kilometers. It is ridiculous. It will outlive the entire civilization. <laughs> anyway, CATL is claiming they will reach 200 watt hours per kilogram, which would be better than LFP cells as Faradion has reached 180 watt hours per kilogram. So there is a lot of potential here. The exciting thing for me is the capability for sodium ion cells to be totally recyclable. You can recycle close to 90%. I will link the research paper on this topic in the description for you guys to read. A few other links have also been given in the description. So you can see where all of this is coming from, including the chemistry and the sources for the news. So this is a hugely recyclable battery and this is one of the big advantages for sodium ion. I am very excited that three large companies, including Reliance, CATL are pumping money into sodium ion manufacturing. The energy density for the next 3 to 4 years may not be ideal for large cars. But sodium ion should easily fit in electric scooters, e-bikes, small cars and three wheelers and of course grid level energy storage. If the battery were 30 to 40 percent cheaper that would reduce the cost of EVs as well. And things have already begun to heat up. Chinese scooter startup NIU which sells electric scooters all over the world has already announced plans to launch a sodium ion based scooter in 2023. News CEO Li Yan told Chinese media that NIU wants to keep costs under control but did not specify who will manufacture the battery packs. India's own chairman of Reliance Industries Mukesh Ambani said, We welcome Faradion and its experienced team to the Reliance family. This will further strengthen and build upon our ambition to create one of the most advanced and integrated new energy ecosystems to put India at the forefront of leading battery technologies. The sodium ion technology developed by Faradion provides a globally leading energy storage and battery solution, which is safe, sustainable, provides high energy density and is significantly cost competitive. In addition, it has wide use applications from mobility to grid scale storage. Sodium ion is the real deal guys. I am very optimistic about this technology compared to all the other chemistries in the coming years which of course are brilliant. They are actually changing the game. I thought I would share this with you guys and look forward to reading your comments. The possibilities are endless. I for one imagine that I could actually change the pack of my old EV with a brand new pack of a much more advanced chemistry. Will the BMS, BMS be able to handle it? These are questions that we leave for the experts to answer and for your comments to ask us those questions. This decade, sodium ion cells will go hand in hand with LFP cells and turbocharge the EV revolution. So, lithium ion says, welcome to sodium ion. 
please leave a like if this video was remotely interesting or educational i will see you in the next video of ev guru